Champ, Stop there with AV Boxing News here with the former champ, Jared Hurd. What's going on, champ? How's everything, bro? Good, man. Good, 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 good. Looking in great shape, man. The last time we talked, we was talking about if we, if we still going to see Jared Hurd at 54 or 160. Good to see you back at 54. Unfinished business, I assume. Right. Fight week, Barclays Center. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. That's exactly what it is. I feel like I got unfinished business still up in the air in everyone's mind who's the best in the division. I know I'm the best in the division. It was at one point, all they was talking about was me versus Shallow, me versus Shallow. But now it's such a mix up in the division, man. We don't know what's going to happen next. You mentioned something very detailed. You mentioned about everybody was talking about yourself and Charlo. If you were to look back 2019 to today, is there a party that says, man, I wish I could have, that fight would have happened last year because it kind of messed up the money or you think it's bigger, the magnitude of that fight will become bigger depending who has the titles at the end of the year? I mean, yeah, of course we wanted. To, I wanted the fight to happen because he did have a title. But man, people really played out how things happened. It, it was no way that the fight was going to be able to happen because at the time I even had to go after the number one guy, which was Aaron Lady Lara, or go after Jamel Charlo. I went after the number one guy. After I faced the number one guy, me waiting on the fight with Jamel Charlo is when he fought Tony Harrison. Mm -hmm. The winner of that, we was going to face each other. He ended up losing. Yeah. So then after he lost, he had to go into his rematch. And then after I faced Julian Williams, I ended up losing. Yeah. And that's when the mix-up happened. So us waiting to face each other because I had one bout left. Yeah. And he had one bout left. He ended up losing this bout. And I was facing Jason Robo. And yeah. then the next bout, I ended up losing. So it was like, and yeah. it was bad time and everything yeah. happened. Yeah. Do you feel like in regards to what happened, you know, what I liked about what you said in the press conference today was that it didn't matter before, a week before you, a week after you, right, like right. Your, your focus on your opponent right. Saturday night. Um, do you feel, like, how is this contractually, how is this going to work? Like, I know you have a rematch clause originally right. with J-Rock. J-Rock lost the title. Yeah. He's entitled to a rematch. So how, how does it ultimately work out? Do you, are you entitled first? Is it him first? Or, you know, uh, for I, people that want to know. I don't know, man, because like I said, it happened a week ago, so yeah. I don't really know what happened next, man. It's kind of the same thing that happened with the Jamel Charlo fight, you know. We're thinking something going to happen after this fight. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to get my rematch after this. Okay. And then, boom, he ended up losing, so I don't know what happened next. There you go. How, how has the state of the 154 division been right now? You know, we have a new WBO champion in Patrick Teixeira, you know, the rise of Tony Harrison, the Charlo, yourself, the Williams. Um, Rosario, like it seems right. like it's like a, it depends on the matchup, the style, you know, it could be anybody's night. Right, that's what I said, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I don't know how it's going to play out. That's why I feel like all the guys should just start facing each other. Um, I don't have too much longer at this weight class. That's why I'm at the point where I'm ready to face these top guys and uh, become see who's the best in the division before I move up. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. You know, how active can we see you come 2020? You know, I know last year was a, it was a Right, yeah, man. Last year I only had one fight. I promise to my fans out there at Swift Nation, I will fight at least three times. Three times. Is there, yeah. um, is it like back-to-back? -back? Like, let's say a two-month span, three-month span? Or is it like, how do you want to break it up? Um, I mean, I would love it to have, if I can get more than four times a year. But yeah. uh, I'm not sure exactly the, the time frame between things. Okay. But uh, most likely it's going to be three times a year. I'm going to let you go with this one. I just want to ask you one quick question on the 160 Jamal Charlo. I heard Oscar De La Hoya say to the press that the, there was a big offer for him to fight Canelo, and he turned it down. You know, I know that the fight was offered to you. I'm pretty sure you would have taken it right there and then because of the opportunity. You right. won the fight. The doors would have been five levels up. Right, you know, right, what's yeah. your, your take on that? Hey, look, man, I've been watching Canelo too, man. Yeah. Hey, look, Canelo offered me that fight. I'm taking it because I'm not going there just for no paycheck. I, I've been watching Canelo. I've been seeing some things on, on, on way to ways to fight him. One thing about Canelo, though, he got some sneaky power. You got to be careful about that. But a uh, fight with me and Canelo, I know for a fact the fans are going to enjoy it. It's going to be a total so far. Thank you for your time. Gustavo Neri, A.B. Boxing is here with uh, Jared Hurd. Swift, yes. Jared Hurd. Thanks, Sean. I'll see you Saturday night. Appreciate it, bro. No Thanks.